Hello, this is Mrs. Thompson. This is your first video that you're watching from me. Um, this is going to be lesson A1 that you're going to see, but I want you to notice inside your workbook, you're going to see the ELOs and proficiency scales. So this is on page one of your algebra workbook. Um, these two proficiencies, ELOs, will be on our first test, which will be September 16th and 18th, depending on the day that you're in school. Um, our goal is for you is to get to that level three. Now, we are not grading these um, with proficiency standards right now, or scales. Um, you will get a letter grade, but just like I talked about in the initial video, um, this is just going to be what we are shooting for each one. This is page two. This is going to be the second half of the unit, which we'll take another test on. Um, when you are taking a look at lesson A1, so if you would please turn now, the page that you should be on is page three. And as you look at page three, our standards that we are looking at is that you can represent and manipulate data with a matrix, add and subtract matrices, and multiply. Now, in the scalar one, tomorrow we'll get into your next lesson is the multiplying um, with the two matrices. Um, what is a matrix? Vocabulary. Um, a matrix, or plural, matrices, is a rectangular arrangement of numbers inside a pair of brackets, like down below here. Uh, numbers are lined up in rows and columns, and matrices are used to organize data, and they're often used to help us make calculations easier. Now, this is kind of a, um, we are talking about this, but this is going to be for some of you, like you've never seen this before, and today's lesson might be pretty easy, and tomorrow gets a little hard. Um, make sure you're reaching out to me and checking with me when you're here so that I can help you. So matrices are going to be identified by the number in rows, by the number of rows and the number of columns. This one below is a 2 by 3 because you see two rows, right? So that's our row, and you see three columns going down. So columns are like those big things in front of your house. They always go up and down. Rows go across. Each number inside is called our element, and elements can be integers, fractions, decimals, variables, matrices that are equal if they're the exact same size. So if the row and column are the same, and the corresponding element, so everything is the same. And you'll see that a little later in a video. Again, if you need to pause it as we're going through, please do that. So how could we use a matrix to represent some data? So we know these three people run a landscaping business. They charge $12 per hour. And we can see down below that these are the people that where they've worked and who they worked for. So one of the things that we might be looking at is creating a matrix only for our Saturday workers and who worked on Saturday and so that we can bill the family. So if we're going to organize it, we're going to use rows. Those are our people representing our three workers that worked on Saturday. So I look through all of these, and some of them are Sunday. These are the two that I'm going to be looking at, this first one and this fourth one. And I'm going to put the two clients that they work for, Ogawa and Baker. So Jeff, I notice, if I'm looking at Jeff, he had five hours for o Ogawa's or o Ogawa's. <laughs> and for Baker's, he had two. Tina, I look. Oh, she worked two hours, and Eric worked three hours. So if we are looking at this, zero hours and zero hours, when I go to make the matrix that you see in your notes, yours was blank here, and this is exactly what you want to fill in. You want to put those brackets around, so please make sure you put the brackets, and then you put the numbers. Notice there's no labels up above for the clients or over here. So that's a pretty basic one that you are taking a look. So the first question students are like, why are we working with this? This doesn't make sense. This is hard. Or um, applications for matrices can be found in most scientific fields. And I will tell you, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, that's how they keep coming up with an algorithm for what shows you've watched and what you might like. So one of the places is in the branch of physics, including all of these different areas, they are going to be using matrices to help them solve, sort out and work with their problems. Computer graphics, um, that's the only way to manipulate 3D models. So um, from a two-dimensional screen to show it 3D, so you wouldn't have your video games if you didn't have matrices. Um, it's in probability theory and statistics, they type um, the type of matrix is used to describe our probabilities. 
Um, they try and come on rank page. So if you think of Google search, the things that come up the first, and that would again kind of be how Netflix and some of your movies. In economics, it's a way to describe a system. There's different security fields that are going to use these. We are going to take a look at this first video. Um, this second one, if you want to take a look at it, it's pretty, um, it's kind of a little too much, I think, but take a look at it. This one's a little shorter. Um, it's one minute and 20 seconds. Um, it doesn't take too long to watch. We're going to put it up in class so that you can see it. And it does have music with it. So um, here you go. I didn't pick the music, but... these different places, um, business and economic, geology, data statistics, robotics. You're going to even see many more places. We haven't played. No, I don't want no rain. Around these walls, fighting to so here are some ideas. Again, pause it if you want to read through some of these so you can see where it's used. Again, take a look at these and pause it. So you can read through it here a little more carefully. I'm not going to pause the video. So this one I think is interesting. Statistics, um, using it for different ways that we look at things, um, designing data that independent. So they kind of talk about them again. Pause it if you need to. So this other one is another video that you could watch. Um, it's You can type in and go to YouTube. And I would maybe suggest going to YouTube and look at matrices and where they're used. There's some really interesting ones. Um, we are now going to talk about your main assignment today is going to be adding and subtracting. Tomorrow, like I said, you're going to get into multiplication and division. So when you add or subtract two matrices, you're really adding the numbers that match the position. And again, when we talk about the subtraction, I'm going to recommend that you change that subtraction sign, just like you did in pre-algebra last year. You change subtraction to adding. So this becomes addition, and everything in here is going to become the opposite. And for a lot of you, it's going to be easier to change this to like a negative 4. 0 doesn't have an opposite. Negative 1 and then positive 9. And then you're just adding these two matrices. Um, the matrices must always be the same size in order to do this. They have to have the same row and column. One of the questions what we'll ask you in your homework is if you can add them. And if you can't, why? And what we say is that they're undefined. And the main reason you can never add is that they are not the same size. So, so the solution is always going to be the same size when you add and subtract as the original. Tomorrow in multiplication, that is not the case. So 
what are we doing when we add? Notice they add the places in the matrices that are exactly the same. 3 plus 4 gives us 7. 8 plus 0 is 8. 4 plus 1, 5, so forth. Over here, again, that subtraction. So I like to think it is 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. 8 and 0. 6 plus 9 is 15. So sometimes people go 6 and negative 9 and get negative 3. So again, just be really careful that you're watching that. And my hint would be changing the subtraction to adding and then go with the opposite as you are looking at that. So let's try it now down here. And again, one of the first things you have to do is you need to know that your final answer has to have that bracket. So we always want to have our bracket as we are looking at this. And if you're in your notes, you should be filling this in. This is on the bottom of page 4. So 3 and negative 1, if we are looking at that, is going to be 2. Negative 5 and the 4 gives us a negative 1. 4 and 2 give us 6. If I'm looking at this next one, this will be a negative 6. 4 and negative 2 will give us 2. And our last one, 6 and 3, would give us a 9. I just want you to notice this one, that this was a 2 by 3. And this one is a 2 by 3, so yes, I know they can add. And my answer was 2 by 3. Now, this one, some people look at it. This is a, if we are going down, this is a 3 by 1. And I'm subtracting a 3 by 1, and that's what my answer should look like. So again, this is where I was talking about. I would change this to the adding and make it the opposite. So that becomes a plus, a minus y, and a minus 3 halves. So when you set up your bracket, it is going to be a 3 by 1. As I look at this one, I'm going to start with my bracket. And I notice that I'm going to take negative 2 plus 2. That's going to give me 0. x minus y. Can't do anything. It's going to stay as x minus y. 1 half minus 3 halves. Well, that's really a negative 2 over 2, which, if we were looking at that, simplifies to negative 1. So make sure, again, this remember, it started as subtraction. And one of my key hints to you is that when you have subtraction, if you have subtraction, just like in pre-algebra, change it to adding the opposite. Change it to addition. And then it's always going to be the opposite of what's in that matrix. One of the last things that we are looking at is we are on the top of page 4, last page of your notes for today. A scalar is a real number factor which is being multiplied by a matrix. This is called scalar multiplication. To do this, it is like you are going to multiply every element in the matrix by that scalar. So if you think about this, this is a little bit of review of distributive property from last year. So all you're going to do is take everything inside that matrix times 2. So in this case, everything times 3. Again, make sure you put your matrix. You might want to pause the video and try and do these two. Here's our first one. 12, negative 4 and a half, 3, negative 15. Again, you don't have to show what you're multiplying. You're just going to give your answer. So here, we got to remember, oh, when we multiply x times x, that we are going to start off with a negative 4x squared. We're going to take negative 2x times the 3y, not like terms. So the coefficients, the 2 and negative 3 multiply, we get negative 6xy. We're taking half times a negative 2. That's going to be a negative 1x squared y. And 0 times anything should give us 0. Now, right below this, you have some white space. And one of the things that I would like you to do is I'd like you to write down this problem. I want you to write this down and you tell, write A to add the matrix that is a 3 by 2. So it has 3 and 2 in it by 2, 1 matrix. And my question is, is can you add this? So, First thing, anytime you look at doing addition or subtraction, is look at the size of your matrix. This one has two rows, so this is a two by one column. One column, two rows. This one is a one by two. One column, two rows. 
So the question is, can you add this? No. This is equal to undefined. Now, tomorrow when you get into the lesson, when you see it in Google Classroom, you are going to see a homework quiz first that you'll see, and then you'll see the video for Lesson A2. In your workbook today, you are on page 42. So, if the problem cannot be computed or added, subtracted, you're going to write undefined and explain why. The explain why, if I was looking at this last one that we just did, and I asked you to explain why, the reason why is because the matrices were the, not the same size. They were not the same size for our matrices. Okay. So that's going to be a key reason. So what you're going to notice is your assignment is on page 42 and page 43. Now some of these with the variables, they get a little ugly when you're doing them. Try your best and take a look at those answers in the back. The scalar multiplication, they shouldn't be that hard. And again, as you are taking a look at these, we're practicing that scalar multiplication and then we're doing addition. I had someone ask me last year when they were doing question 12, and they said, well, how do you add these together? Well, keep in mind, this is a 2 by 2 and another 2 by 2. So should it work that we can add those? It should add together. How do we look at our answer? Well, negative 4n plus 4, those are not like terms, so you're going to leave that answer like that. What is n plus m plus negative 5? It is n plus m minus 5. I'll let you finish that one. If there's other questions, please make sure when you come into class that you ask, and I hope you have a good evening and that this makes sense to you. Again, check out YouTube videos on other places for applications.